Hey everyone and welcome back. So before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help us out over here and it also really helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So we're going to be going over static equilibrium and we'll be solving the problem shown on the screen. So for this problem, we have two cables that are tied together here at point C as shown. We need to find the value of alpha, this angle right here, for which the tension is as small as possible in cable BC, then repeat when the tension is as small as possible in both cables at the same time. And for each case, we need to determine the tension in both cables. So this problem has multiple parts to it. So for the first part, part A, we are looking for BC's force to be the smallest it can be and still have this system working. So. Before we actually figure that out, let's go ahead and let's draw our free body diagram here. I'm going to set up our XY coordinate system, and I'm going to have my origin point be the point where all these members connect in and all these forces connect. So X and Y, my origin point will be point C. And now I'm going to throw on my known and unknown forces, which I have six kilonewtons of force to the right there. And then both of these cables are going to be pulling back to resist that six kilonewtons of force. And we really don't know what those are just yet. So I'm just going to call this first one FAC and this bottom one FBC. Now the angle for FAC is known. It's 55 degrees off of the vertical. So that's 55 degrees off the Y. And then alpha is what we're looking for, which is also off the vertical for BC. So it's off the Y there. So when you are looking for the smallest possible angle that can occur and still have everything work out, what's going to form is what's called a force triangle. And we can find out what angle this can be to form this triangle. So what we're going to have is we're going to have our six kilonewtons of force here. And basically we're taking these arrows and we're rearranging them to form a triangle. We will have F A C over here, and then F B C coming back down on this side. And of course, we can extend that six kilonewtons of force like that. So we will have the three angles inside there, and these will just be the angle differences between these forces. So this one right here will be the difference between F A C and the six kilonewtons of force which the six kilonewtons of force is right along the x-axis right here. So we're looking for that angle right there. So this one will be 90 degrees minus off the 55 from the y, and that gives us 35 degrees. Then we're looking for the angle between FAC and FBC. Well, this one will be this angle right here, this big old angle right here, which is going to be a total of 180 degrees subtracting off the 55, and then subtracting off our unknown alpha, which essentially is 125 degrees minus alpha, oops, not C, alpha. And that's that angle between FAC and FBC. And then finally, we have our angle between FBC and the six kilonewtons of force, which is that angle right there. And this one will be 90 degrees minus alpha. So we know that the total triangle has to add up to 180 degrees. So we can just tally up these um, three internal angles here, and then we can solve for alpha. So what we have is that we're going to have 90 degrees minus alpha has to be added with 120 to 5 degrees minus alpha, and then finally added together with the 35 degrees, and this has to total up to 180 degrees. Well, you, we can go through the math here, and it's going to end up being 250 minus 2 alpha equals 180. Well, then we have minus 2 alpha equals minus 70. The alpha is going to be minus 70 divided by minus 2, which gives us 35 degrees. So that is our smallest angle possible for this system to work and still have everything be in tension and in equilibrium. So now that we know that this alpha is 35 degrees here, 
Now we're tasked with finding what FAC and what BC actually are. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we are going to sum forces in the X direction, have them all equal to zero, and then sum forces in the Y direction, have them all be equal to zero. So let's write out these equations for part A. So we're gonna take all the forces in the upward direction be equal to zero. <clears throat> and looking at our FAC and FBC, since FAC is up and to the left, its components will be up and to the left. For FBC, since it's down and to the left, its components will be down and to the left. And then the six kilonewtons of force will not have anything in the Y because it's 100% in the X axis. So filling in this equation, we have FAC and it will be cosine of the 55 degrees because the angle is off of the Y. Cosine is adjacent. So we're using cosine of 55. It will be positive because it's upward and then minus FBC. And that will be cosine of our alpha angle, which we just found to be 35 degrees. Can't solve for FAC or FBC there. So just move on to the next equilibrium equation whenever this happens. So we'll take to the right as positive for our summation of X forces. And just starting with our same unknowns here, we will have minus FAC, minus because it's pointed leftward, and this time, it will be sine of 55 because the angle is not off the X, it's off of the Y, so it's opposite. And then we'll have minus FBC, and this will also be sine, and this will be sine of 35, same reasoning there. And then finally, plus the six kilonewtons of force, which has to cancel and be zero. So we have two equations, two unknowns. Anytime this happens, what we're going to do is solve for one of the variables in terms of the other and then plug it into the opposite equation. So I really don't need my free body diagram for the remainder of this part because I just turned everything into these equations of x and y. So from my fx equation, or actually from my fy equation, sorry, <clears throat> taking FBC to the opposite side here, so I have FAC cosine of 55 is equal to FBC cosine of 35. So FAC is essentially FB times cosine of 35 divided by the cosine of 55. And that gives me 1.43 FBC. So FA is 1.43 times larger than FBC. So what do we do with this? Well, we're just gonna plug into the other equation with this value of FAC like this. And then everything will be in terms of FBC. So by plugging into the FX equation, this is what I get. I get minus 1.43. FBC times the sine of 55 minus FBC sine of 35 plus six kilonewtons is equal to zero. So let's go ahead and combine like terms. So minus 1.43 times the sine of 55 minus the sine of 35 gives me minus one. 0.745 FBC. And then if we take the six kilonewtons to the other side, it would be minus six kilonewtons. So FBC is essentially just minus six divided by a minus 1.745, which FBC pops out to be 3.44 kilonewtons in that downward left direction. So there's one of my forces. So what do we do with this? Well, we're going to take this and we're going to plug it into this equation right here and get FAC. So FAC is equal to 1.43 times 3.44 kilonewtons of force, which gives me 4.92 
kilonewtons of force in that up left general direction. Alrighty, so those are the answers for the first part of the question where we're looking for the smallest force for FBC and the angle which represents that. So angle of 35, force of 3.44 kilonewtons for FBC and then FAC is 4.92. Now, the second part is asking for cables that have the same force occurring in them. And what angle creates that? So what angle will create the exact same force between FAC and FBC? Well, it's going to happen when their angle offsets from an axis are exactly at the same position. So what that means is that when FAC is equal to FBC, this angle alpha has to equal the angle of 55 degrees. So once those angles are equal to one another, the forces will be equal to one another because the distribution of the six kilonewtons of force will be the same to both of them. So for part B, the alpha will be 55 degrees for the reasons why I just said, to make the uh, forces in FAC and FBC be equal, which this also makes the summation equations very easy to work with. Since FBC is going to be equal to FAC, we just have one term here, which I'm just going to call the force in the cable. We don't use the same equilibrium equations that we just did from part number one, because this is set up with an angle of 35 for FBC. So we can either use F of X or F of Y to solve this. Well, let's just use summation of forces in the X direction equal to zero. And we're gonna have minus F sine of 55 minus, sorry, FC, FC sine of 55 plus six kilonewtons of force is equal to zero. So what I essentially have here is minus two FC sine of 55 is equal to a minus six. Well, minus two times sine of 55 gives me minus 1.64 FC equal to a minus six. Well, the cable forces for both AC and BC will be minus six divided by minus 1.64 and that equals to 3.66 kilonewtons of force for each cable. <clears throat> so that problem, the wording of that problem makes it seem more difficult than what it actually is, especially part number two. Um, you just have to watch out for what's being asked of you and um, look out for those tricks that they try to throw in with these problems because that's very wordy. And this is just a simplification of taking those words into these problems and showing you that for static equilibrium problems, the process, no matter how it's worded, is almost exactly the same throughout these problems. Free body diagrams, summing forces in X and Y, solving for your variables. And then if you want to, you can plug your, uh, your values for your variables back into your equilibrium equations and make sure that you get zero for your answers in those directions. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see more problems solved in this variety, please check out the other videos on channels. We have quite a few equilibrium problems so far. Also, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you like this video, leave a positive comment below, and subscribe to our channel because it really does help us. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day.